Comic Boom. Hey guys, Comic Boom here to review Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. This is the popcorn thing that I got at the movie. It was kind of cool. You know, and I'm not just going to review Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, because everyone's done that. We're also going to talk a little bit about the four-issue Star Wars Allegiance, which was a comic book that led in, directly leads into the movie itself, to see if we get any tidbits of information in the comic book. Spoiler warning, obviously. You guys, by now, probably everyone and their dog has been to see Star Wars Rise of Skywalker. I have now seen the movie uh, twice. Twice. And uh, I liked it. I liked it. Straight up, I liked it. Now, first, before, before we get into the movie, and again, there's spoiler warnings, the Star Wars Allegiance 4-issue comic book, which is written by, uh, I don't know, a guy named Sachs, drawn by Ross, or writer Ethan Sachs, artist was Luke Ross, and Lee Lowridge was the colorist. Uh, not much happened in this uh, series, but it's, I gotta say it's beautifully drawn. It focuses, it focuses a lot like the movie. It focuses on Rose Tico, on Rey, on Princess Le on General Leia Organa, and it focuses on Finn and Poe, and BB-8, and uh, Chewbacca, and on the First Order, and on Kylo Ren. It's actually, it's a very entertaining four-issue series. And just to give a quick summary of what happens in these four issues, and I recommend you get them up if you if you pick them up if you can get them in a trade, go ahead and do it. Uh, what it is is um, it uh, we know what happened after the events of the Last Jedi. Now the Last Jedi, regardless of how you felt about it, from a strategic standpoint, at the end of Last Jedi, the Re Rebel Alliance, they were there was only there was only like 250 left 250 rebel rebels left right i mean it that that's my joke i mean it, it just seemed like remember at the battle of crate which was that final battle where general holdo did the holdo maneuver and slammed it at light speed to the to the to the to the empire ship and destroyed it at light speed well that uh that uh, decimated that decimated uh the uh those ships for the empire but it also, the, the fledgling numbers of rebels uh, that remained were very, very few, and Rey managed to save them, and thanks in large part to the sacrifice of Luke Skywalker, when he forced Ghost projected himself in battling Kylo Ren. But what, what happened flowing from that is that General Leia, again, is looking for weapons. And in, in this four issue ser series, she sends Finn and Poe to uh to to go to a moon to a moon base to try to find a hidden stash of old republic weapons and so they have an adventure uh when they go to the moon base of they go to a uh poe dameron and finn end up going to a moon base located on the moon of ah what the hell is it the moon base of avatar and meanwhile, uh, General Leia Organa, she goes and she tries to recruit more calamari. You, you remember, remember General Akbar, that calamari fish-looking thing, the guy that says, it's a trap, it's a trap. Well, anyways, he was killed in The Last Jedi. That explosion where uh, General Leia Organa ended up being the old Mary Poppins, the, you know, the force Mary Poppins, and sort of flew back after that entire section of the ship was blown away. General Akbar was killed in that explosion. And General Akbar's son, is in this series, and General Aragana takes Rey with her, and she interrupts Rey from her training that we see Rey in at the beginning of Rise of Skywalker. She actually does use Rey for an adventure on the planet known as Mon Cala. Mon Cala is the home planet where the inhabitants are the Quarren and the Mon Calamari. Calamari. And it's, it's interesting. The Mon, they end up at at the end of this four issue series, uh, one of the inhabitants of the Mon Calamari, uh, in particular, uh, well, I can't remember his name because all the names are crazy, uh, bet betrays the Calamari and ultimately, to redeem himself, uh, attacks the First Order that arrive at Mon, Mon Cala. The Mon Cala capital is Dak City. In any event, Mon Cala, the First Order, ends up arriving at Mon Cala at the end. And they uh, it, and General Leia needs to escape with all the ships, with all the Calamari ships, to help her do battle and to rebuild the Rebel Alliance and to meet up with uh, Poe Dameron and Finn, who've got 
manage to obtain a weapon stash from a far off moon base. And they're successful in doing that. And meanwhile, Poe Dameron and Finn manage to escape some bounty hunters who are after looking for Finn. And well, it's 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 a nice little adventure, actually. It would have been a nice little movie in and of itself. So the the four issues here were actually not bad. I actually didn't mind it. I'd recommend you guys pick it up. It's a nice adventure. It's uh, beautifully drawn and it's a well-told story. Now, what about the movie itself? Rise of Skywalker, straight up, I liked. This is a beautiful mess of a movie. I love this movie, straight up. I'm going to say it. I just, I just love this movie. I, I love this movie because it's straight up action. It's, the movie starts off with a bang. Right away, it starts off with action and I love it. It, we, we, I love the rapport between all the actors, the Poe and Finn and Ray and Chewbacca. And I love how Kylo Ren is, is looking for Palpatine. Right away, the dead speak, right on that opening scroll. You know, Palpatine is, uh, Palpatine is alive and they're looking for him. And Kylo Ren wants to find him to kill him because he wants to be the supreme leader. He doesn't want to have any competition. And right away, he ends up using the holocron there. Only he calls it, they call it the Wayfinder instead of the Holocron, but it, they should have called it the Holocron because that's what it's called in, in all the video games. But basically it's a Holocron, which helps find, helps find uh, the Sith base, Palpatine. And Kylo Ren uses the Holocron, finds, the, uh, Pal finds, finds Palpatine, and, utilize, and utilizes all of Palpatine's new forces. Now, there are so many convenient it, conveniences in the plot of Rise of Skywalker. It's insane. Let me tell you, let me tell you, uh, so much of this movie, it, it's obvious that it, it doesn't link up well with Force Awakens or Last Jedi particularly well, but there's enough there that you can go with it. I, I, I would use J.J. Abrams' story here, and, or assuming he's the one who, he wrote it, or him and his writers that helped him, I, I liken it to Jeff Johns. It's sort of like when Jeff Johns tried to put lipstick on the pig that used to be Parallax, who was Hell Jordan. How do you undo all the damage? How do you redeem uh, a story that destroys an icon like that? How do you redeem Last Jedi that, that bastardized Luke Skywalker? <laughs> you know, how, do you, how do you put lipstick on the pig that was Last Jedi that arguably destroyed a franchise? Uh, well, this movie does it. To the extent that this movie succeeds, for me, it succeeds because it flipped the bird. It flipped the bird to Last Jedi. And I love that. I love that. But at the same time, if you really loved Last Jedi, it also, you know, gives you some things. You know, uh, there's a scene here where Luke, where Rey is all depressed and is, throws her lightsaber away into a burning fire and... All of a sudden, the force ghost of Luke appears and catches the lightsaber and says, "That's not. That's no way to treat a lightsaber." So that that's awesome. Even though even the name Rise of Skywalker, let's face it, is sort of a flipping the bird to the Last Jedi because it's the Rise of Skywalker. Well, there really isn't any Skywalkers left in this movie, except except in theory, General. Well, not in theory, General uh, Leia is of course a Skywalker, but her role in this movie is. Uh, is uh well actually her role in this movie is significant and it, it actually leads to some of the more emotional high points in this movie this movie is an adrenaline rush and it goes from beginning to end and there's always something going on and it's one thing right to another and it's the the centerpiece of this movie is the relationship between kylo and ray and they're both battling each other at different locations uh, Ray is looking for different is looking for a holocron to find a way to get to palpatine to kill Pal palpatine Meanwhile, Kylo goes to Palpatine and Palpatine says to Kylo, look, I've got all these massive ships, this new armada that I've spent the last 30 years in hiding, creating. They're yours, but you got to do what I tell you to do. And the master plan is, of course, to get Kylo and Rey together. And the master plan that Palpatine has was he, he was really just expecting for Kylo, I think, to get killed and that Rey would find him and then Rey would kill him. Ray is a Palpatine. We all know that from all the things. Ray's a Palpatine. And Ray would take over and assume the Palpatine legacy. And instead of doing that, of course, she ends up utilizing the powers of all the Jedi and ultimately defeating Palpatine with the help of Kylo Ren. 
And then her and Kylo, to Kylo, Raylo fans will love it. Kylo and, and Ray kiss. They use the powers of the Force to essentially heal each other. Unfortunately for Kylo, when he heals her, he dies. And then he disappears at the same time that his mother, General Leia, does. And they both disappear at the same time, mother and son. And it's a beautiful scene. It's emotional. That's really how it ends. Uh, leading into the planet on Tatooine, where, where Ray takes Leia's lightsaber and Luke's lightsaber, buries them in the sand on Tatooine, and then puts on her own, shows her own newly constructed lightsaber with a yellow blade, so she's constructed her own lightsaber. Good for you, Ray. That's the movie. What did I think? I didn't mind it. I didn't mind it. Uh, it was... I thought it had a lot of action. I loved it for that reason. I forgive... There are so many holes in this movie... I just forgive them all because it was action packed and it was fun. It was so much better than Last Jedi. It was, uh, I actually put this next to Empire, Rise of Skywalker. I had the most fun at, at the movie theater. This is my second favorite Star Wars movie. Second favorite. And I know some people will think I'm crazy, but I love, I, I, I thoroughly enjoy this movie. I thoroughly enjoy this movie, warts and all. It felt like a Jeff Johns fixing a bad comic book. Fixing a history in a bad comic book. It still has all kinds of holes in it and everything else. But I liked it. I liked it. It was a beautiful mess. It was a beautiful mess. <laughs> and it is what it is. And it's over. And it's, you know, it's over. And at least now Disney's going to learn the lesson from this moving forward. I think they're going to learn the lesson. Let's hope they learn the lesson. That when you do trilogies for Star Wars or anything in the future, maybe map them out a little bit better so there's more consistency and have more, have more have a more unified vision from movie to movie uh, to final movie. But it is what it is. Guys, tell me what you think of... Uh, tell me what you think of Star Wars Allegiance, the four-issue series. It's actually pretty good. And tell me what you think of Rise of Skywalker. And until next time, comic boom out.